think we are there. Welcome to the show. Welcome. All right. As promised, Betsy is back. Yes. And uh, you're listening to the Wow Pod. Yes. And I'm Jared. Yeah. So, uh, a little bit earlier, we talked about Skinwalkers. Fun show. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Betsy wasn't here for that. She'll have to watch it later. She was uh, peddling her wares at the local (laughs) house of book. Would you like a book? <laughs> Actually, she's probably just going, shh. Oh, yeah. give us a good one. I've Let's been see. practicing. Shh. That is not going to. Shh. You've got to get, you've got to get through to the 17 year old boy. Yeah. You know, just started his senior year. He's kind Normally of, what I do is I go sit next to him. I say, what's up? <laughs> what are you doing over here? Really creep him out. Uh-huh. But anyway, so we're going to chat about. Uh, Betsy's bringing this show. Magic. Yes. Okay, so this falls on the heels of last week's show. Because last week we talked witches. And we talked about how witches um, practice these spells and put these spells on other people and different types of spells that they do. And we also talked about Kind of like, what is a witch? Um, you know, it's really your, um, your upbringing, <laughs> you know, the dogma that you were brought up under. All of that stuff determines on determines whether or not you think something is witchcraft. Yeah. So, I have to tell you, I kind of left here like, I just don't believe in witches. I just don't believe that there are witches. And then... That's a scary way to be. I get in the car, and I'm kind of driving home, and I'm like, but what if? So we end most of our shows with, like, this formed opinion that I change, like, the second we end the show. One of the ones that's the biggest shocker for me is the satanic panic. Yes, I know that everyone we covered in there was more than likely innocent. Now, we need to redo that show. First of all, it's not up anywhere anymore. It was our very first out of the gate. I know, and the the sound was a little rough. Uh, a little is an understatement of the year, of the <laughs> millennia. And we really fact, should. We really should cover it again. Matter of fact, it would be an understatement next to Jesus saying, man, my feet are cold in this water. <laughs> It it was rough, rough, but the subject I still think is quintessential. But then, as you dig into it more, there seems like there. It seems like there was shady stuff going on, and either a people were just trying to find a target to point at, or b the people doing the shady stuff actually maybe. Doing shady diverted stuff. Diverted some, diverted some, uh, some attention from themselves, maybe. Perhaps. Because you hear about this stuff. I mean, there's a show I'm prepping right now that is, uh, it's in Europe, but it is mind blowing. And S- it is heinous. Mm, I can't wait. Those are my favorite. <laughs> the ones you have to go home and take a shower and you cr- yeah. you scream. Oh. You turn on Boy George crying game. <laughs> and they're scrubbing yourself. Oh, I can't get it off. <laughs> Got the toilet brush at the old mouth like uh, Ace Ventura. <laughs> <laughs> so what uh, my opinion throughout the show was like, I just don't, I just don't buy it. Then I leave and I'm like, mm, but what if? Then that leads me down this pathway that, um, like, how powerful manifestation is, how powerful our our brains are, mm. and I end up at chaos magic, which, dare I say, is a magic even you could perform. <laughs> uh, someone's bold in their thought process today. So it's a contemporary magical practice. New age religious movement, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Um, 
It initially emerged in England in the 1970s as part of a wider neo-pagan and magical subculture. Uh, It draws heavily on the occult beliefs of this artist, Austin Osman Spare, and it has been characterized as an invented religion. So, that's where we start. It is, it is the idea that if we strip away all of the dogmas, the symbolic ritualistic and the- theological upbringing, that um, what we're left with is a, a set of basic techniques that are believed to be magic. Okay, tell me if this is one of them. Om Nam Chiba, Om Nam Chiba. It Om is Nam not. Chiba. I mean, I guess you could use that. Because that's the best part about chaos magic. Chaos Do you magic. Know what that's from? Uh, yes, Indiana Jones. Boom! Hit yeah. it. That's what he'd say before he tore their heart out. <laughs> I'm, I'm Shabab. So chaos magic teaches that the essence of magic is that perceptions are conditioned by beliefs, and that the world as we perceive it can be changed deliberately. What this brought me to are those cultures around cultures around the world. Where well, hold on. I believe I'm taller than six feet. So, measurement is just a construct. <laughs> You've got to change your measuring stick. So, those there's there's specific cultures around the world that believe. Um, say in reincarnation reincarnation mm-hmm. and they live their entire lives excited for the day that they get to die to become reincarnated Ooh, like heaven's so, gate yeah so their beliefs changed the perception of well, the world around, and perception is everything heaven's gate is wild that's another show we got to do man alive heaven's gate so we really do. But that shows another like, oh, wash it off kind of show. Oh, it's self-castration. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Need some therapy after that. So. I'm going to be on that couch saying you better chalk up a couple sessions. Yes. Call our counselors. The central defining tenet of chaos magic is the idea that belief is the tool for achieving effects. And if we create the belief, we create the perception, and the perception is the reality. So what you're saying is next time I'm at the store and uh, a moment hits, where, or at work, you know, when you got to use the bathroom and all they got is that John Wayne toilet paper, you can trick yourself into believing it's two-ply. You can. Maybe a quilted ditty and not... Say, 32 grit sandpaper. <laughs> you can change your belief that 32 grit sandpaper is not what you want. Oh, no. I, I, See, I don't need to. That's your perception. It's, you can change your belief that this thin, you can read through a, piece of toilet paper. It's the chafing, the blood, and the need of transfusion afterwards <laughs> that has me convinced. <laughs> so... Here's what it is. You can create, say, a sigil. And then that sigil, you tie to it the belief. So pick something. These set of keys, you see it often in sports. These set of keys are lucky. Like they're lucky underwear they wear all season long. And they wear them like since college. Things are like... They're falling apart. And so long as I have these set of keys, I will not be in a car accident. You shouldn't say that out loud, Betsy. That's what I'm saying. That's how that's how this magic works. So I'm going to tell you first some facts about chaos magicians. So a chaos magician magician creates symbols and charges them with energy symbols can be absolutely anything it can be something you do every day 
Um, they say that we, because it's very rudimentary, it doesn't require a lot of rituals, there's no sacrifice or bloodletting, that oftentimes we we do chaos magic without even thinking about it. Like when you think that uh, that was a lucky sign or or this morning before I left for work went well, so it's going to be a good day. Yes. Those are probably... Types of chaos Because those magic. are things that happen to me all the time. Like, yeah. You know, like, it, okay. So like when you... Like if I see if I see a quarter on the ground uh-huh. and it's heads up, I... Pick it up. Feel a li- I pick up the tails up too. I just do it different. I do a headstand. It's a whole thing. But just, and that's a carryover from my childhood. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So we often are practitioners of chaos magic without even thinking about it. So the idea is that A, we're actually changing our perception. If I start every morning and I write down 10 things I'm grateful for, my day will be better. And I know that because we'll get into the guidelines on how to practice this because I've been practicing chaos magic for a long time. And B, what if instead of just accidentally practicing it that we intentionally that you put practice it that that is true so these magicians create these symbols and charge them they're often called sigils and they can be completely unique made for a specific intention and and then they will meditate on these sigils putting all of that belief into these sigils and then use them. All that focus. All that focus. Well, that is, I mean, that's what Led Zeppelin did. Yeah. All their albums. They each had their own symbol. The symbols, yeah. And all their albums, they put it on there. And that was, I guess, them doing chaos magic. Yeah. But I think they, call, they called it symbology. But... Like every time I bring it up, they were just focusing on that saying, we're going to be, you know, the best bandit ever and chaos we're focus magic but, chaos. You're just saying it right there. That's chaos magic. Hmm. We don't need to sacrifice a goat. We're going to set our intention. We're going to believe that we are going to do this. We're going to assign that belief, a sigil, a symbol, mm-hmm. and we're going to use that symbol. That's chaos magic. I need to make a symbol. I need a sigil. It's a sigil, and we do need to make. I sigils. need to make a sigil. So, practitioners well, I could give me can a big use. Old, I could. I could be like. Uh, what's his name? The rapper that wears the, the rapper big clock. The watch, but, yeah. with the clock, but mine would be dinner plate. Yeah. Bam. Yes. Big old gold chain around it. We're talking like, I don't know, big link number. My fingers have dot black dots. I put a windshield on a car today, and me and the tube of glue argued, and yeah. I lost. Got to know one another. Uh, this stuff doesn't come off. It it will. My flesh will have replaced itself three times before this stuff comes off. Oh, yeah. Off. It's permanent. It's with you now. That's how it goes. We always wondered why the old man always had <laughs> dots on him. So... One of Chaos Magic's main principle is that like attracts like. This means that people who are financially successful put that energy out into the world and draw even more wealth to themselves. So some practitioners believe that using Chaos Magic can bring them even more wealth and success. Well, even and although our banking system charges poor people but gives rich people money, you know, Chaos magic. It's kind of a weird system, but it also makes sense that people that put money in a bank for the bank to use to further investments in other, you know, areas would have a return, whereas the poor person doesn't. But it, it's still kind of a goofy system. Yeah. So it, we see this often with emotions like love and fear. Mm. If you put love 
into your cosmos, into your atmosphere, Mm -hmm. it's attracted by more love. Mm. That's easy for us to grasp. But for some reason, we can't make that leap to financial success and wealth and those types of things. But it is the same thing. If you go around being a hateful twat waffle, you're not going to attract love. Technical term, folks. Yes, technical term. But waffle. <laughs> if you put love out, you're going to attract that energy back to you. That's chaos magic. Well, let's think. What other what other uses could we have for chaos chaos magic? So there are some guidelines. There are some guidelines for chaos magic, and I, I have them for us. One never kill baby pygmy goats. So it says goat in the name, but if you kill a baby <laughs> pygmy goat, Straight to hell. First of all, you have to recognize that chaos magic is insular. It only applies to you. So you You cannot put your chaos on someone else. You can't curse. Or human form of magic practice that helps change your circumstances. If you can ignore the societal constructs that we all live under. So here's six guidelines. One, and I'm going to do these in order because it feels like they're important in this order, avoidance of dogmatism. So the societal structures get in in the way of our personal truth. Uh, It's the idea that there are many ways to get to the number nine. There's six and three and seven and two, and, and there's not just one construct that works or one path that gets you there. So you have to avoid the dogmas, the dogmatism. So if your parents said, this is how you do it, you've got to be able to let that go. If your pastor said, this is how you do it, you've got to be able to let that go. You have to, you have to recognize that you're on an individual journey, that this journey, this path is yours and it's not going to look the same as the person next to you, or maybe anyone else. So those dogmatisms try to group us all together, and they actually cut off your ability to create your own chaos magic. Mm. Two, prizing personal experience over what you read and research. Okay. That's a little difficult for people who really love to read and research. For those of us who are not so good at reading... Easy. So it's the idea that you don't honor things that don't resonate with you. If something doesn't sit right with you, instead of continuing to do it because it's part of your dogmatism, your upbringing, your raising, what's expected of you, you need to explore why doesn't this resonate with me? How am I feeling about this? What in this isn't working for me? Because it's your, it's your, intuition saying this isn't your path three technical experience you need to keep meticulous record of what you have tried on these different paths and then analyze it you are not a passive passenger this path you're taking one step at a time whether you believe it or not you may be following a crowd or you may be going it alone but you're going it so you're saying Make this serious business. So you need to find, it's your responsibility to find out, find out what works for you. Number four, desensitize. You need to break down those beliefs that were hammered into you since birth. So oftentimes the Baphomet figure is viewed as, <laughs> Victoria, dang, I wanted to sacrifice a goat. <laughs> I know, Vic. I know. You sacrifice a baby pygmy goat and... We will never be friends. Especially if it's in pajamas. If it's in pajamas, oh. (laughs) So you need to desensitize. So the Baphomet figure has often been hailed as satanic or, or whatever. It is an occult figure. But on his arms, it says solve and coagula. And that literally means take apart and put together resonated with it which path you chose because of that why you chose that path and then you need to deconstruct your ego 
So your ego, we often think is like, well, I'm not vain. That's not ego. That's just, it's been kind of coined that or termed that. But your ego is literally I or self. So you need to deconstruct how you got to where you're at. Pick apart your id. Yeah. So belief in chaos magic will either empower us or inhibit us, depending on how we use it. So if you keep hard, fast beliefs, you are blocking yourself from exploring other things. If I believe that I don't do A, B, and C, I'm not going to, say, get to heaven. I have stuck with my dogmatism because I've been told that, that I've been programmed that. I have also not explored my experience. I haven't really broken down if any of what they're saying resonates with me and I've not chosen my own path. I'm passive. I'm just like, well, he said to do it, so this is what I do to get there. So discover the path that works for you. Taste all the flavors. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to preface this by saying, don't try murder or hurting other people or things like that. Because again, chaos magic will either empower you or inhibit you. And you can use it in good and bad ways. If I put chaos magic, chaos has a negative connotation sometimes, well, and so does magic, but this... So does magic. To me, when I pick this apart using my id and what have you, it looks to me like you're just putting... You're turning your focus up to 11 on whatever you're... Like, say I want to make money. Yes. So I'm I'm putting a lot of intention into that, and I don't think any outside cosmic force changes that. I think it's that I'm going to be more... Uh, more liberal with taking chances or taking chances to make money and more conservative on losing it. Instead of right now, um, I've got a bad habit of buying stuff that I shouldn't. (laughs) And yeah. So So I I honestly believe it's all about it. Like I keep harking back to Led Zeppelin on their sigils. I don't think they used magic like an outside cosmic force for their but I think they focused on that sigil become the best band so that they actually became the best band. But what if? But what if? Now that but breaks w- me. But what if that's the next level? What if setting all of your intentions is great? It's like a plan. It's like a goal without a plan is just a piece of paper. What if the next level is to meditate, create a sigil, put all of that energy into it, and then use that to create the universe that you want. I almost think the focus on making that sigil and putting the energy into it is the driving force. Is the magic. But I think it happens because you change your own focus towards that. And... But if it's there's done a, with a next level of intention. Yeah, what if there is a cosmic force that... Yes, that's aids. what... That's So I'm like, but wait. What if that's what witches are doing? Like when they make the jar. When they make the jar, they're using bad chaos magic, and they're well, focusing all of what that What if they're negative, making like a happy potion? A lev- uh, yeah, so what if it is a health good? Potion. Yeah. What if that's what witches are doing? Just chaos magic with a flare. And it works better if you're Jazz there ads. with them. Yeah. Jazz <laughs> so, uh. the next one and the final one is what they call gnosis. G-N-O-S-I-S. So, knowledge? It is experience over theoretical knowledge. So, this is where the meditation comes in it is it's almost like an altered state of consciousness i need to learn to meditate so bad i know know. where you find yourself so when you're deconstructing deciding what you want you have to recognize that that started somewhere that our desires started somewhere Mm -hmm. so we have to go into this gnosis and we have to 
cut out the theoretical knowledge Mm -hmm. and we need to just look at the experience of us as I or self. So, the, the, the overarching thought is that nothing is real. Well. And everything is permitted. Murder, let's just discourage you again. We don't want to be using chaos well, magic for that. Never, I would say, never use it in a manner that would overtly harm someone else. And if you do recognize that that comes back to you, that like attracts like. Let's just say hemorrhoids will be the gentle side of what shows up. That's right. So everything is literally a response or a series response, a series of responses from other people around you that are all playing into one another. Mm-hmm. That we have, for the most part, taken this really passive role in our pathways. We're like, okay, we're doing this now. All right, we're doing that now. Instead of recognizing that our brains are, ac- the thoughts that we create are actually escaping our skulls. They can measure them. They come out as energy. Mm-hmm. And th- that energy never dies. So whatever we're putting out there, if we can focus that, get real intentional by chaos magic or some other kind of magic, we can literally create the universe we want to live in. Mm. And what if that's what witches are doing? Mm. (laughs) That's what brought me to chaos magic because I was like, well, I don't, well, maybe, well, shit, maybe I've made a mad now. Hmm. Made the witches mad? Yeah, because I was like, I I don't buy it. I'm not about making witches mad. But I don't know. Because I know if I set my intention, if I set my intention, I get what I want. 100% every time. Mm. Because then my actions follow my intention. But I've never created a sigil, I don't think. I mean, maybe I have. I think we need to make sigils one day. We should figure out how to do them on the show. Yeah, so there's several guides on how to create sigils that can be meaningful. But chaos magic basically says anything can be a sigil. My cup could be my sigil. That is, so long as I drink from this, I will maintain my health. Okay. um. So say I sit down and I meditate on this cup and... And I, I give it all of this power. I'm a lot less likely to fill it up with beer. I'm telling you. I'm a lot less likely to fill it up with, you What know, do you reckon? <laughs> a giant sigil. Yonder. But, uh, We're yeah. talking 30 pounds. <laughs> Pewter. <laughs> painted, painted gold. <sighs> painted gold. It'll be dipped in Thanks gold for later. joining, Seanette. Yes. Okay. Um... Okay. Let's run through these comments. So that was like a This will just deal. be a quick one. Uh, yeah. Uh, hello, Seanette. Seanette, sorry to see you go. Glad you came. Humming, humming. We will talk to you soon. Uh, she says, I have a photo you need to see. I will send it to you at the WOW podcast. Can't believe I forgot about it. Awesome. Okay. We look forward to see it. King says, hey, let's King. get it. What's up, King? Uh, Shauna says it will change your perception of things for sure. Mm-hmm. Heaven's gate. Oh. Big good J twenty one. It's B I G G J twenty one. Heaven's gate was an offshoot of the OTO. I've heard that. I've also heard that it was an offshoot of uh of the uh uh oh hell what's that one in California it sues everyone Scientology. Oh, but I don't know. It's interesting. We're going to dig into Heaven's Gate. I've got uh, lots of crazy stuff in my head about it. Um, where it started, uh, yeah, it's rough. It's, it, you know, anyway. It's we'll a gross show. That. It's a totally gross show. All right. Uh, King says, yes, all you have to do is believe. See? Yeah, I think, I, I do think. That's th- the trick. It's the secret. It's the secret. The sigil That's is where building, the secret came from. Is building the board with the 
pictures of all the stuff you want on it and looking at it every day and touching Focusing. Seanette says, the monk said, if you believe something is real, then it is real. Hence the energy you put into it. So, yes, I agree with Betsy. She is right. Betsy is always right. That's I, right. I, That's a very good answer. Yes. I question her <laughs> just so that she will explain herself better for you guys. <laughs> Biggie says, great example. Agreed, Betsy, 100%. From Seanette, yes. From Seanette. Lori, sounds like having a positive attitude. Yes. Oh, it's on. But it's like next level. It's you're, it's not just like things are going to be great. It's like manifesting great. Yes. Yeah, focusing. Oh, we we got to do tests. Now I've just got to start keeping a journal about it. Dear diary. <laughs> <laughs> Today, Today, I kissed the devil's rusty balloon up. <laughs> It did not go well, and it was bitter. And I am still not a witch. <laughs> I'm not okay Sincerely, with stuff today. Jared. <laughs> Sincerely, dumbass. <laughs> Anyways. King says, oh, you got to. Seanette says, Megadeth, Donald Marshall, research that. Okay, I need to. Uh, I do know Megadeth. Don't know Donald Marshall. But anyways, in this, King says, in the 70s, all records of music had spells and symbols. Yep. Yeah, but it was really prominent, super prominent on the Led Zeppelin. Like that, most of their albums were just that. Uh, Seanette laughed at us. Probably something Betsy said that was funny. I doubt it. Sean, oh, they're talking about uh, about my uh, sigil I'm going to make. Mm -hmm. So bling bling, Seanette says. Biggie says... Uh, cat face laughing dinner plate. Yeah, dinner, big dinner plate. We're talking <laughs> nine courser. Heck it's, yeah. gonna, it's gonna be in the shape of a big T bone steak. <laughs> 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 I found my sigil, folks. Um, King says back in '93, two brothers super glued themselves and were stuck together for seven weeks. What I wonder where what they part are today? did they super glue themselves yeah. to? Like, did they super glue their hands together, or like, did they do the old? What kind of super glue? The old. Uh, chest I got some. Slap. I got some things in my house that super glue hasn't worked on. We need to do some research. Yeah. What kind of super they use? glue works on what you don't want it? To, yeah, and it has no effect on stuff you want it. To. Yeah. <sighs> Shauna says we should do a show on blood magic. Yes. yes. Oh boy, that's a tough one. Uh, maybe a, a in-depth call into uh, what's that one that that weird artist lady does? No, Spirit Marina cookie. Abramovic. Yeah, but yeah, the Abramovic lady. No, she's gross. What if? Okay. What if all of these celebrities uh -huh. that rise to the ranks and they all do? Mm -hmm. Whatever it is they do. I think that's because what Harvey... What if they're practicing chaos magic? I think it's Harvey Weinstein poked him in the eye while he was abusing him. It could have been. And so they're all like to each other. Yeah, he got me too. <laughs> it's, it's like a secret. But hey, I'm going to be on the next Marvel movie. <laughs> it's a secret society. I saw that coming. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Anyways, no, um, I think you're right. I think... Oh, we do need to do a show on the Illuminati or the occult in in the entertainment industry because that stuff gets deep. Yes. That would be like we would have to chalk out an all-dayer. We would have to have lots of guests on. We would have to just go deep on it. So I want to try Chaos Magic. I do too. Let's finish these comments all, and then we'll line out what we're going to do. And I say we do it. This week, and we show up next week with our sigils. Okay. All right. Done. Uh, Seanette says, what she is saying is 100% true. She also says, I am experience, experiencing this, but it's so hard to process and take action. Yeah. I'm sure. Because it's got to be intentional. Yep. Ugh. She uh, she thinks you're describing her to a T. CPST. 
I, 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 I don't know what that is. It's a thing. Research at CPSD. Okay. All We're right. going to have to write this stuff down. And uh, I love pajamas. King says, the demons use this to get people to attack other people like neighbors. For example, my situation or at work where a co-worker copies your style. Um. Can demons practice magic? I guess they could. Yeah, but would they use this magic of intention? Because this magic seems like it can only be focused on yourself. Yeah. For good or for ill. Because it's about your I mean, you can focus this on you to make yourself, you know, a, a better poisoner and then poison someone, I guess. But, you know... But I, I, it feels like it. the focus is on making you achieve a goal. It's insular. And so how you use it would be the outcome. So here's the thought, though. If this exists, hello, we have to assume that other types of magic exist. But very true. I would rather just this type exist because I would rather it be that only that you can only use affect magic yourself. to affect yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I don't want someone to actually put a curse on me and I don't want any time when I yell at someone that to come true. Although I haven't yelled at someone in a very, we're talking. Yeah. I don't really, I'm not a yeller. Yeah. I am not either. I'm non-confrontational again, my upbringing. Yeah. The most non-confrontational people yeah, were the ones that we were surrounded by. Yep. Yeah. Good uh, picture humble Mormon folk. <laughs> <laughs> I, am the, I am like the little girl in City of Angels. I love I pajamas. I love pajamas. What's City of Angels? I love, it's a show, and I love pajamas too. I'm, oh, pajamas. Uh, b- 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 sorry. I knew a person who wore PJs in every situation. Yeah, you see them at Walmart. Uh, they're on the <laughs> <laughs> and and <laughs> and uh, the guy who did Playboy. Oh, that's true, Hefner. Yeah. Hugh Hugh Hefner. Yeah, old Hugh. <laughs> uh, Zach says, "Man, Betsy is on it." Yes, meditation unlocks a pineal gland. Yes, but how? Muscles. I'm so bad at it. Yeah. I, my Here's what I do. I go, okay, I'm going to meditate. And then I go, did I take the chicken out for dinner? Is that the dryer? Is that the third time I've started the dryer? <laughs> do I have socks? I'd be like, has it been a minute yet? <laughs> has it just peek with one eye. <laughs> two seconds. It's only been two seconds. For real. Does time move slower in meditation? <laughs> How about today I go for three seconds and tomorrow I shoot for a minute? Yeah. I've always wanted to learn to meditate. Oh, King says, I tell you, I feel it in my neighborhood. Neighbors always arguing and kids don't come out to play oh. at all. Not like before. And that's, I think that's common in a lot of neighborhoods. We're losing the sense. I think the internet is pulled away the, we have communities now, but our communities have grown larger. And I've noticed people, people don't, maybe because before the internet and before this mass communication, people, I don't like to say forced, but people to build community would suffer with more BS from the smaller group to have that community. Whereas, Nowadays, people don't suffer with anything. They're, everyone's insular in their selected groups on the internet. I, I'm telling you, the internet is the Gutenberg press. We're going to see a whole new revolution, revolution of civilization come out of this. And that I believe, so my son, my little guy, could spend every free minute playing computer games online well there's also the nerf gun army but see that's the thing is because we don't allow him to our neighborhood has a troop 
of 14 or 15 little boys that have Nerf battles every single day, rain or shine. And they all wear armor and they have battle plans and generals and all kinds of like things that they do. And they even like spy on one another's battle plans, but they play outside. Like I guarantee you right now, if it is daylight outside, he is outside playing with his friends. (laughs) That is awesome. But I think we can, in our neighborhoods, change that at a household level. Well, we can. And also, there's a matter of being adults in the neighborhood to try to uh, focus on a couple times a year having a neighborhood party where you're like. And I think that's where our stems from. We're missing a lot of that. We have, we had a couple when we first moved into our neighborhood that were childless, but really old school. And so twice a year. We had a block party. We had a chili cook-off in the fall, and then we had a summer party right after school got out. And everybody went. So everybody knew everybody. And that's one of the and issues. And that changes the dynamic. I know all my direct neighbors, but I don't know much past that. Past like two houses down. Yeah. Yeah. And let's say the power goes out for four days. Probably be a good idea to know who they are. Yeah. Even if just I can help them or they can help me. So, Let's, chaos magic. Yeah, we You gotta, can wait for it to happen or you can build it. Yeah. I Well, I'm thinking we need to try it. We need to go about this officially, uh, practice, and see what happens. Uh, be careful in higher levels of yoga because when you leave your body, something else may take your place. No, I don't want that. Uh, I don't think unless you need, one no <laughs> one one okay I leave my body demon comes in finds Scopes out scopes it out for a second finds out that between the years is fat and goes damn it <laughs> all, right, all right fine he's punished that I <laughs> my body would be become the punishment for the demons damn Betsy you are blowing me away she is nailing that's from ah uh, thanks Seanette um. Big Big J says, uh, comes back tenfold. That's right. What you put out. King says, and the scary part is the lady has been seen in people's homes, but a specter, uh, a specter like uh, out, uh, out of, of body, body things. Thing. She, those devil. I saw her in my room. <gasps> oh, Ooh, that gives me chills. I see my creepy neighbor in my room. We're going to have words. I'm out. I am out. Boy, this thing just jumped. Light a match. (laughs) (laughs) You got good fire insurance? Uh Uh-huh. Big J says multiverse. Yes, the multiverse. And they just turned CERN on again a couple months ago. We're going to be popping through. There's going to be all sorts of stuff confused. That Mandela effect is going to happen. King says, my mom told me to plant some plants that are supposed to ward off evil. They dry up. And a rotting smell fills the air. So I read something. That you have these plants. In my witchy quest. When evil shows up, they the plants get stinky. So. Mail the plants to the evil neighbor. In my witchy fest looking for all the things chaos magic, I like downloaded two audio books on it and all kinds of stuff. Really? Yeah. One of the things that came across, King, you may want to do this. You get an onion that has began to rot, uh-huh. and you peel off the top layer of skin. And then throw it at her house. And, <laughs> and her you, car. you carve her name into it, and then you bury it. Uh huh. And that is a spell uh-huh. to ward off evil. How would it be if you did that, King? And like one day, she you see her like walking out to come curse you out, and she's like, ah! I'm melting <laughs> or whatever. Throw water on her. I mean, it worked in the Wizard of Oz. Sure did. What are her- a house, King. Here's what. Here's what you got to do. Start with water. It's cheaper. Now you can get the tiny home, so it's not as hard. This we're not. This isn't a big undertaking. Even tiny a tiny home. home. Wives, a crane. 
Wagstaff comes over, lifts, <laughs> lifts it, in it there. up. Say, neighbor, I need you <laughs> out here. Drop the house. <laughs> hey, Bertha, come here. <laughs> Anyways, um, no, that plant stuff. Let me know what kind of plants those are. Send me an email. Stinky plant. That's uh, Jared at the wapod.com. Maybe it's the corpse flower. Oh, that penis flower is supposed to smell like that, too. Remember oh, that one? Yeah, the I do. Thailand that's going extinct because all the ladies are pulling it up out of the ground for some for, reason. I don't know. Anyways, uh, Seanette says she has to go. Hey, Seanette, have a good night. It was great to see you. Get some rest. She, uh, but she said she's been up since 2 this morning. Oh. Mm. Okay. Um, do, 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 do. A lot of Betsy love. Hi. Uh, it's close to the holidays. That's when evil attacks. Uh, I thought, do they attack during the holidays? It sure feels like it. Does it? Yeah, kind of. I'm usually cheerful. I mean, Halloween is my favorite. So holiday. all of Hollywood sold their souls. What if they did? Lori? Yes, yes. Or what if it's like the successful ones, the ones that are in all the blockbusters? Like, I, I wonder, because when they're all covered, they all seem to keep doing the same. Well, and you have stuff. to, if we look at this logically, logically. the the I sold my soul, um, it applies. Even if they didn't literally sell their soul Even to the devil. Even if they didn't kiss because, a rusty balloon knot. Because their entire life, their morals... Everything is dictated by pop culture and what dictated, the people want. Dictated by getting that next thing. Yes. They will do. Shock. Awe. Mm -hmm. Top of the charts. You ha I mean, what if you like started out like this really good Christian girl and then your producer's like, listen, you we sign the contract, you got to strip down. We don't need to bring Katy Perry into it. That got That's what I'm saying. Last time. Okay, Lori. Uh, King of Wecomundo says, Lori, they did. That's why, uh, Jeezy is that, is that, uh, uh, what's his name? Not Kanye. Kanye? No, that's oh. Ye. Who's, who's Jeezy? G Easy, I think is what he. Okay. Who is that? It's a rapper. Is exposing it all. And he sacrificed his mom. Oh, not that he said all his baby mom and his family are all witches. I think he's talking about... Oh, he is. You look further down, yeah, he is talking... Yeah, he's talking about Kanye. Yeezy, we got to remember, King of Wacomundos, Hispanic. He's throwing the J in for the H. That's right. Or the the Y. Anyways, no, yeah, uh, that is true. Remember, he had the broken jaw, and then he got real big after that, and his mom died of cancer. What if he did sell his mom? Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, you've heard the story about uh, what's that famous singer that wore the meat costume? Yes, 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 Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga. And her friend that she started out with, mm -hmm. that her friend's mom says she sacrificed? Yeah. Ooh. Another story, another time. There's too much to talk about. Man, we do not live in a boring world at all. <laughs> One elderly lady did that onion thing with an iron rod. She had a heart attack and passed last year. So she did. She tried to like uh, carve the name. Yeah. Oh, she was a grandma. I'm of afraid a if I do her. something, anything like that bad energy, that I'm going to get it back. I am just going to go for, I'm going to start out small. Like I'm going to do my dishes every day and then I'll work up towards the money thing. <laughs> I might just dive right into the money thing. Halloween is the biggest occult sacrifice holiday next to Christmas According to SRO. See, and that's the thing, man. Why do people got to be jerk faces on Halloween? Halloween is my favorite. Candy, happy, fun, loving kids. Yeah. It's my favorite holiday. I love it. And don't be a jerk face on Halloween. Yeah. When they, the king says, when they sold, say they sold their soul, their soul means they've sacrificed someone. See? Lori says, yes, so mm. true. Look up Lady Gaga and Morgana. She was another singer. Yeah, it was Morgana was her friend. Yeah. And her friend was actually the good singer. And Lady Gaga was like a backup yep. singer. And then Morgana fell off a building and died. And Lady Gaga became extremely popular. Yeah. King says, and don't forget, after that, Gaga copied 
her, her style. style. Yes. Yeah, it took all the of her stuff. They, she took her entire persona. Her, her repertoire. Her repertoire. Except for the name, the Gaga. The Gaga. But no, I think we, we look at this sigil stuff some more. Uh, we promised to only use this for good. Like Google. <laughs> Didn't Google used to have a sign out front that said, do no evil or something? Something like that. We promise we won't do evil. Yeah. yeah. That didn't last. That They're, didn't age well. We're doing good. What do you think? Okay, before we close out, what do you think about this latest stuff that just came out on the intercept about uh, about uh, Homeland Security and the DOJ telling Twitter and Facebook to shut stories down? Like the the stories are true. All that conspiracy theory really happened. Ma King Bird. Dude, I'm telling Alive you. Alive and well, because it works. Why would they give it up? It works. not just Mockingbird, but we're also looking at COINTELPRO. Yes. I think we're knee deep in that. That stuff's still going. It's just it's targeting. It's so effective. The traditional people that it worked for. Yeah. It's just turned around. The, they, stored too, they stared too long into the abyss. Yes. And the abyss went wink. All right, uh, da, 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 da. we're going to finish this out with fantastic th- stuff from Biggie J. Thank you, Big J. Thanks for joining. <gasps> oh, they even made a video of her getting pushed. You're talking about the Morgana. We're going to have to look for that. All right, you guys, have a wonderful week. Have we'll be back week. next week. Um, let me know what you thought about that little thing I did earlier today. Those might start showing up more often. From one or both of us, just a quick couple stories. But anyways, have a good week. Uh, Be safe. Humana, humana.